Lemon Jacob Murphy, I think I'll call that one. The Crystal Palace match folks come up to Newcastle fans to do us a favour and make sure you stick around. Welcome back to Black and White Banter, you absolutely beautiful Newcastle fans. It's been a little, I've been a little bit quiet, I haven't posted for about the last week or so, um, last five or six days. International break, lots going on. I've only just passed fit to clear the house. Um, you'll probably know exactly what I mean by that, the dreaded C word. Only just today. So it's nice to have some proper fresh air in my lungs and be getting back amongst it. International break, it's done. It's finally done. We are back in action. My God. And the next international break, which is in like three weeks, England have already qualified. Get in the bin, international breaks. But yeah, it's nice to be back doing some videos. Um, I'm sure you've probably all missed me a hell of a lot. If you are new Black and White Band Newcastle fans, do us a little favour, give us a little likey likey loo, what that subscribe. I've just danced out the shower to local hero, what feels like forever. Crystal Palace today, tricky one. Tricky one because they've got the second best defence in the league. And God, if you cast your mind back to recent matches against Crystal Palace, they've been absolutely shite. <laughs> absolutely shite, and that's pretty much put it as politely as possible. Barely any goals scored. I think Almiron screaming at the top corner a couple of seasons ago was the best I can remember in this fixture. So, yeah, pretty, pretty poor run of things uh, more recently. But, hey, I'm still confident. I am. We've got players back for this one. We don't know whether Botman's going to be fit. We don't know whether Joe Linton's going to be fit. You would assume they are. Isaac, he's a little bit touch and go. And as for Tenali, I haven't done any videos on it. I'm not going to talk about him. I'm not, I've decided that I'm not going to do that. We don't know what the outcome's going to be. It's a little bit too close to home for me. Would I play him today? No, I wouldn't. I actually wouldn't. Um, I think that would just put all eyes on him with regards to the media. We don't know what... It's only Eddie Howe's going to know what his mind's, what he, where his head's at. I don't know where his head's at. We don't know where his head's at. It'll be incredibly frustrating if he is out for a long time for us. But hey... Let's make this about the football today. Let's continue the run that we've been on, which might be easy to forget before that lovely little fixture of Dortmund at home on Wednesday. <laughs> Dortmund twice in, in like, what, three weeks with Man United away in the cup sandwich there as well. Wonderful couple of weeks to get fired up again after that horrible international break. Let's get over there. I'm meeting up with someone today who's come a very, very long way to watch their first ever Newcastle match. So that's pretty exciting, so I'm a little bit early for once. So without further ado, hopefully the rain holds off and the storm. Let's get over to the tune. Right, I'm just outside St James's Park. Atmosphere is building a little bit now, football is back, but as promised, I am joined by someone very, very special on this video. I'm joined by Amy. Amy, you've come, a, well, to say that you've come a long way would be a little bit of an understatement. Please, Amy, tell me a little bit of a story and a back, background in why you are here today and why today is so big for you. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm an American and I came all the way from the, the Gulf Coast and on the south and in the US. I, uh, I actually met someone from Newcastle playing a game during the COVID lockdown and started watching the games and I've just been hooked ever since the matches. We say games. <laughs> <laughs> no, we say games as well. We say games okay. as well. <laughs> and, and, uh, obviously you and me met in the preseason tour. We did. Summer series Summer in Atlanta, series. Georgia. And, uh, Best thing I ever did, and today is your first ever game at St James's it Park. It is. I cannot wait. I'm in heaven. <laughs> so you've tried. You've tried a sausage roll. Yes, I have. What do you think? It was. It was. It was delicious. It was way better than I expected. Right. I had the Greggs. I had the weather spoons. <laughs> you like weather spoons as well, didn't you? I sure did. That is my kind of girl. My kind of girl. <laughs> so any there you go. Any Americans watching this video, and I don't think there will be many. If, you ha if you've always wondered about a Greg sausage roll, as an American tried one, pretty good. Um, it really good, it really pretty is. Good. Right, well, I'm not going to keep Amy for too much longer because she wants to get inside the stadium and soak up every moment. But before you go, I'll meet you after the match. I'm going to get your predictions. 
I hope you're looking charm. No pressure. Yeah. I'm going 3 1. First scorer. Who are you going to go oh. for? Oh. We haven't seen the teams yet. I don't know the teams I yet. I know, I don't know. Ooh, maybe Anthony. I'm going to go Anthony Gordon. I said 2 0. I'm going to go 2 0. Anthony yeah. Gordon. Uh. Anthony go. Gordon. We'll agree on Anthony Gordon, right? Amy's going to quickly grab a scarf in the club shop and then get herself in. Like I said, no pressure to be the good luck charm, but there is a lot of pressure to be the good luck charm. Oh, yeah, the lads! And team news has dropped in. Callum Wilson's in. Hey, Callum Wilson. Ooh. Ah, I'll take that. Gordon's back in the team, which is absolutely delightful to see. And also, Big Joy is back in the team, which, again, one of my favourite Newcastle players. I'm delighted to see that as well. So he hasn't gone for Tenali. We don't know whether that's anything to do with what's gone on. I'm not going to speculate that. It's a strong team. Botman hasn't made it, but I'm not too worried because look, look, look what the sales has done without Botman in the team. We should not lack any faith in, in our captain at all. You know, we buried PSG with ease. So, yeah, I'm happy with that side. Lovely to see Gordon back in. Murphy on the right-hand side, not Almiron. I, I, I am in moments a fan of Murphy. I think he's very different to some of, some of the other options we have on the wing. He's very direct, and, you know, he's... He's full of running. He's full of energy. So hopefully we have enough in the tank. This Crystal Palace team, the aiming for a third clean sheet in a row. Very, very solid at the back. Probably he's not going to have that much of the ball if we start the game the way we want to. But this is a very, very good opportunity to win a football match at home and set us up for what is a very spicy, again, very chaotic couple of weeks. I'm going to go and sink a, sink a quick pint before I get in the stadium. I've just had a big crack with Amy there. Absolutely lovely to see her. All the way from America. I said, said there's no pressure on her being a good luck charm. There is. I'm sorry, Amy. If you're watching this back in the days after this game, you are responsible if this result doesn't go well. <laughs> you come all the way from America, that's what you get. So I'm going to get in there. Hopefully there's no issues with digital ticket and, and fingers crossed the lads can do it. Are we the lads? I couldn't go inside St James's Park because I didn't do a match preview for this one without firing some Newcastle Crystal Palace stats at you. Stats. 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 So, I love a stat. I absolutely love a stat. Newcastle have conceded 17 goals at home since the start of last season. That is the joint highest out of any non-promoted team along with Man United. We are absolutely class in defence at home in the Premier League. Newcastle are 8th with 13 points in the league right now. Well, based off Opta's expected points, we have 16.4, which is the which is the second highest after Man City. So our expected points would put us pretty much challenging for the title. I'd rather they were real points rather than expected, but still, another interesting stat, because that's just what Black and White Banter does. Interesting stats. And finally, Mr Kieran Trippier, who we all know is absolutely class has had 89 chances created from set pieces since the start of last season. That is the highest by 28 out of all of Europe, Europe's top five leagues. Long may that continue, Kieran. My God, he is a fantasy football dream. Fingers crossed he gets a couple of days. And that's it from the stats on me. I'm going to go and get a beer. You've had enough for stats for one week. Thank you very much. Oh, he's not to the question. Chad, go on. Start, Chad, go on. Oh, Half time, and let this be a little lesson for any Newcastle fans watching this who don't come to St James's Park that often. If you're going to go down at half time for a beer, let me just warn you if you go down early, there's always a chance, albeit a small one, that you might miss some goals. Yes, I missed the second goal, yes, I missed the third goal to get a pretty flat pint of Madry. But hey, I'm still happy. Eddie Els Mags are absolutely class. What a first half, almost perfect. Crystal Palace came with a game plan, in my opinion. 
where they didn't want to concede early. Murphy, did he mean it? Of course he meant it. Of course he meant it. Puskas award at the end of the season, the goal of the season, it's his. Absolutely class first half, all of the ball, put them in that chokehold. Eddie Howe's grabbing the ball, giving them it for a throw to get the urgency back. Passed the ball smoothly, Bruno looked good, Joel Linton looked snappy, Anthony Gordon, so got to see him score, my God did we miss him in the last match, and it was almost a perfect performance, Palace have conceded no goals in their last three matches, that went to the sword early, and it's just a formality in the second half now, could finish a cricket score with players to come on, that was an absolutely brilliant first half, let's see what we can do in the second with players to come off the bench, and I'm absolutely happy as hell. Honestly, these little breaks that we get with no football seem to do our players wonders sometimes. With Dortmund on Wednesday, it was just brilliant that first half. Absolutely class. Am I a little bit sad that I missed the second two goals? Yes, of course I am. But hey, I'll still take it. Eddie Howe's mags are brilliant. Bring on the second half. Are we the lads? I've just come out of the stadium there, joined by a fellow YouTuber actually. Uh, this is David. David runs Geordie's Greats. Uh, I'll try and remember when I'm putting the video together to put the video in the description for you to follow. David, I call the video when I've just done my little intro there, Easy Peasy Lemon Jacob Murphy, because that was Easy Peasy Lemon Squeeze. What did you think of that? Oh man, it was just... Before the game, you just knew that it was going to be like in the bag. But that Murphy, Murphy, me for me, just epitomise a fucking Geordie. The way he celebrates and the way the way he scores his goals is two, just two assists and a goal by me. I think in that match, yeah, it just makes me feel like proud to be a Geordie because he's just he just enjoys his football. You can tell he yeah, enjoys he his football. Yeah, he's, he's living his dream every day, isn't he? Same as long stuff, same as burn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, I was in Shearer's bar and I was hearing the. Uh, them singing uh, Dan Byrne, he's from Blythe, because I'm from Blythe as well. He's from, you're from Blythe. Uh, it's just like, it's 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 so good that the the local lads are doing well. Yeah, wonderful. In this team, because Eddie Howe knows how important that is. Uh, though. And I was so pleased that Tonali. Yeah, the got, reception he got was wonderful. Oh, my life, amazing. And that's what we're about. because yes. we're called Newcastle United, yeah. not Newcastle Ununited. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. So I was, I, I'm so proud of this club. Just, I'm so proud of it. It was just almost a little bit surprisingly comfortable that game. A little bit. Like I think the first goal was key because Crystal Palace probably came with a game plan, and from there it was yeah. just easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. Um, like it's routine, you could see it. But yeah. we are becoming the team that is routine against yeah. teams like, like that. Last last season, well, either last season or the season before, Crystal Palace was. It's always been a nil nil, isn't it? Is that, is that right? Three yeah. nil nils last yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. Three nil. It's nils. always been like a tough, tough tie. But we're in a different league now. We're just oh. in a different different level. Sorry, oh. not right. Level. I'm just joined by Elaine and Gary, who are just patiently waiting for some people to meet them before they head off. Elaine, Gary, very comfortable performance. What did you think of that one? Well, well, I just thought it was a tremendous game. They played really well. But saying that, the other side never had uh, all the best players. But we done really well. We did. We done really, really well, and I'm really proud. We were you expecting it to be as comfortable as that? Well, n not really. Uh, but them being such a good side, yeah. Uh, we just we just carried on. We've done my best, and my best was yeah, good enough, wasn't it? And what about you, Elaine? That's my first ever match. Of first ever match? You're joking? <laughs> right, you need to come every week. I know. <laughs> you do need to come every week. <laughs> so not a bad first one to tick off then. No. Plus the lift was broken, so we couldn't get to the seats we were meant to be on. 
So we've been beside the uh, executive boxes. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Happy days. Hello. What was that like? Brilliant. How were the prawn sandwiches? Oh, we didn't eat any of them. Poor, poor question from me there. Yeah. Uh, right. Who are your man of the matches today? It might be a tricky one with the, with the score 4-0. Oh, I, I can give a man of the match because they're all tremendous. Don't try and give me one. Well, I, I just couldn't because they're all, all as good as each other. They all tried this hard. I, I could not come out of the stadium without speaking again to Amy, who obviously I caught up with before the match. First ever game at St James's Park. First ever time in Newcastle, and you watch us absolutely batter Crystal Palace 4 0. Tell me what that was like as a first experience. It was amazing. I, I literally spent like the first 20 minutes, like trying not to tear up and embarrass <laughs> myself. Like it was perfect every second of it. And who, very difficult question to throw at you, who's your man of the match? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I thought, said I wasn't going to throw you any difficult questions, but I put you on the spot a bit with that. You can say the whole team if you want. Yeah, I mean, really, like everybody, it was just amazing. And yeah, yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't have dreamt of the result being being better coming into your first ever match at St James's Park. Perfection. And what was, as someone coming for the first time from the states, what was your highlight? Was it the build up when the players came out? Was it the celebrations? What, what, what was your highlight? Yeah, you know what, the singing, because it's always, I can hear it on the TV, and it's just different when everyone around you is doing it, and you're part of it, like, it was it was fantastic. And if there is any American fans watching this video, and I think I've got a few from that pre-season tour, what would you say to anyone thinking about travelling over for the first match? Yeah, come on, like, <laughs> run! <laughs> you're starting to be leaving, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I really am. Just for them sausage rolls, though, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, Greg's, no Greg's at home. Right, we're going to go for a beer now anyway. Thank you very much for speaking to us again, though, Amy. Thanks. Well, I think the phrase I used at the start of this video, easy peasy lemon Jacob Murphy, couldn't have summed it up better because that was easy peasy lemon squeezy against the team we were told coming into this one. They were going for four clean sheets, I think it was, in a row. Second best defence to Man City in the league. Simple. Simple. I think the first goal from Jacob Murphy. <laughs> Can't wait to watch that one on match of the day over a beer tonight. Did he mean it? Did he just stick a leg out where it's going to go down as goal of the season regardless? That was the one that really set us up. I think Crystal Palace probably had a game plan to keep it at nil-nil until about the 65th minute, you know, 60th minute, keep it tight. Once that went in, I think they were like, shit, this, is what, this isn't what Roy Hodgson told us, to, to, told, told us was going to happen. And then it was just all of the ball. First half, I said it half time. It was almost perfect. We had them in the chokehold, all of the possession. Some lovely balls getting floated in in that first half. Didn't create loads of clear cut chances. Anthony Gordon should have scored when he hit the bar. And then, of course, when I'm down having a beer at half time, just before half time, second goal goes in, third goal goes in. It's, it's dreamland, it is. Against a team, let's not forget, yes, Crystal Palace were missing a couple of their good players. This is against a team who have not conceded many goals and we were getting told we're going to be very hard to beat today. And we've just steamrolled them. We have. And then in the second half we go, it was just comfortable. It was almost boring. That's what it must be like for Man City every week in football matches to be like, oh, when's the full-time whistle going to go? Anyone been watching Coronation Street? That's what it felt like in the second half. It was passing, passing, passing. And then Callum Wilson wraps it up. Um, performances today. Well, I'll tell you what. One, who deserves an honourable mention? More just in recent weeks, not just that game ourselves. If you were to squint and shut your eyes and watch Newcastle from a distance, from level seven, if someone told you Botman had been playing the last couple of weeks, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have been that surprised because Lascelles came in back in against Burnley. He looked a little bit shaky in the first 10 minutes and ever since he's done as proud he has. Comfortable, solid in the air, passing the ball off nice and simple. Where it's maybe not his stronger point with the ball at his feet. And he's our captain and Eddie Howe kept him our captain. And I tell you what, I'm proud of the lad. I am because Sven Botman is a huge player for us. I said he's probably one of our most important Maybe I'm questioning that now, if Lascelles can come in and do, and do a good a job as that. Honourable mention to him, I thought defensively today we weren't really troubled, we were sound. Um, Bruno looked solid again, really comfortable, really classy, really silky. Longstaff, he's just proven week after week. And I was going to do a video about it earlier in the week if I'd been posting a little bit more. Talking about where, why Southgate, has it ever been known for a midfielder to see a team into the Champions League places last season? 
and continue in the form he has since he's coming back to the team this year and not get even get a sniff in the England squad with the likes of Calvin Phillips and whatnot getting called up. Conor Gallagher's, I'm not sure, but Sean Longstaff has to be knocking on that door. And the next international break, it's nothing. England have already qualified. Should Southgate be looking at giving Longstaff a go? Some people, anyone who's watching this who's not a Newcastle fan might say, oh, he's just being biased, he's just... He's saying that, that's ridiculous. I honestly believe there is not an English midfielder at the moment in the Premier League who is putting less of a foot wrong than Sean Longstaff at what he does. And his goal, you know, awful mistake from them from the defender to give the ball away, but he smashed it in. And he smashed it in against PSG. He is very good in the final third with some of the intelligent runs he makes, as well as of all the other stuff that makes him so important in central midfield as well. Jacob Murphy. Let's just talk about him. My man of the match today. I should have started with him, to be totally honest with you. The goal, did he mean it? No, of course he didn't. But he's all-round play. He's a confident lad. As that bloke I just spoke to, David, uh, said earlier, he loves his football and it's lovely to see. He plays with a smile on his face. He's living the dream. He got two assists today. His pass for the fourth goal. Yes, it was a simple move. Trip you onto Murphy, you do the rest. That pass to get it so perfectly through to Callum Wilson was class. And not many people are going to have Jacob Murphy in the fantasy football team this week. But I tell you what, a lot of people will have wished they did. And has he really done us wrong? I know he played in AC Milan when he didn't really have a chance to do, it, do anything in attack in third. But if you look back to last season, I said when this season started that Jacob Murphy should be getting a look in. Him against Almiron, the two very different players. But we've got another option there. Going into Dortmund, going into Man United in the Cup, going into Wolves, going into Dortmund away. The fixtures are coming th th thick and fast and Jacob Murphy is just giving Eddie Howe another... He's going to be bubbling tonight, Jacob Murphy. He'll probably be out in the big market. And long may that continue. He's my man of the match. I thought he was class. Callum Wilson, a little bit quiet the today. I was glad to see him get his goal. Anthony Gordon, we know we missed him against West Ham. He's looking one of the most spicy wingers in the Premier League. He really, really is. All those people who said it was a waste of money, my God, has Eddie Howe proved them wrong with that player that he, des he so desperately wanted in the, in the last window, in the January window. Fantastic. Long may that continue. Do you want to be in? Just bloke just randomly staring at me all the way through is making that video. Yes, I'm recording myself talk. It's not that much of a big deal. <laughs> hey ho. Um, he obviously doesn't dive into the YouTube world very often. But yeah, absolutely comfortable. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Anyone who follows me on other socials will know there is an episode of Dealing with Eddie Howe's Mads coming from that one. And I look forward to making it. So if you don't already follow me on socials, please do. On to Dortmund we go. I watched a little bit of Dortmund's game on Friday night. I'm not fearing them at all. It's going to be battle of the flag displays. Of course it is. Why can't we get seven points in those first three Champions League games? What a way to set ourselves up. And I tell you what, what I am seeing now is these little breaks that we get, these international breaks, I think they benefit us. I think Eddie Howe is such an obsessive manager that we always look better when we come back from a break. And we just need to keep riding this wave of this momentum. It's class. Newcastle are class. That three defeats in a row is long, long gone. And I'm proud as punch of them again today. And Crystal Palace don't know what's hit them. 4-0, easy peasy, another clean sheet. On to Dortmund we go. I am absolutely loving life. And I'm going to finish this video on Newcastle fans by saying, anyone who says football is just a game does not understand. Now, I've had a bit of an up and down week. I'll be totally honest with you. And football is the one thing that keeps me distracted. Football is the one thing that keeps me happy and keeps me focused and distracts me a little bit. And it's not just a game, it's so, so much more. And when Newcastle are doing this well, I absolutely love it. Newcastle fans, if you've liked this match vlog, drop down, give us a little likey likey loo, whack that subscribe, and of course, there will be a last word video, and there will be a match vlog coming for Dortmund in the Champions League. Say it once, say it twice, say it three times, it never gets old. Dortmund in the Champions League. Eddie House Mags are back after the longest international feeling break ever, and they are still absolutely class. How are you lads?